Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about a competitor to AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. And right here in this build, we have Intel Core i5-13600K, which so far has proven to be quite interesting. Now, right here it's running on the ASRock Z790 Tai Chi with the DDR5 memory, but you don't have to go with DDR5 with 13th gen of Intel Core processors because why not use older boards? Of course, we'll get to that part later on, but let's start with some general specifications of Intel Core i5-13600K. It has 6 performance cores and 8 efficient cores and basically hyperthreading isn't available on E cores. Base TDP is 125 watts and the max TDP is 181 watts. Now when we compare 13600K to 12600K we have 14 against 10 cores, threads 20 to 16 and well quite interesting base frequency on 13600K is 3.5 GHz while on 12600K is 3.7 GHz. Turbo boost frequency is 5.1, bus frequency is the same, multiplier is 35 while on 12600K is 37. L3 cache is 25 megabytes and it has the same uh, fabrication process and the uh, TDP as well as the max temperature. Now the quite interesting factor of 13600K is that you can still use older boards and still manage to go with DDR4 compared to the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X and this brings down the price rapidly. Now from the day I recorded this video and these are the prices that I found on in my case, most affordable e-tailer in Europe, we have quite interesting comparisons. So basically what we got here is 13600K at 370 euros, while the 7600X is 290 euros. But here's the catch. If you decide to upgrade your PC and you're deciding to go on AMD Ryzen 5 7600X, you have to buy a new motherboard, you have to buy new RAMs since they only support DDR5. While on 13600K, you can basically just upgrade the processor. So, comparing the prices, 13600K with the CPU, so that's 370 euros. RAMs, 16 gigs, can be found for 72 euros. That's Kingston Fury Beast RGB on 32 100 megahertz and the motherboard which is which could be b660 is 572 euros if you go with 32 gigs which are 109 euros the price would be 609 and finally if you decide to reuse your old rams the price would be 502. I don't have to mention if you use your older Z690 and your older DDR4 or B660 and DDR4, then you just pay for the processor. And the total cost for MD Ryzen 5 7600X, CPU 289 and RAMs 150, Kingston Fury Beast, I'm not sure, but no RGB and on 4800 MHz, motherboard at 300 euros. And this is B650E from ASRock. So then again, the price is 740 euros. So if you go with the complete, let's say upgrade CPU motherboard and RAMs, Intel configuration costs 572 or 609, depending if you want to go with 16 or 32 gigs. But AMD costs 740, that's 140 euros more than for the Intel configuration. I don't have to mention that 240 euros is the difference if you just leave your original DDR4 or if you already have a B660. But of course, I think you won't be upgrading from 12th gen and just swapping the processor unless you have a really good deal, to be honest. Now, with uh, 13th generation of Intel Core processors, we had a launch of uh, Z790 motherboards, but basically there's no reason on going with Z790 uh, because you can either go with Z690 or B660 for stock performance, of course. Now, even though I'm stating everything for the DDR4 and B660 or Z690, I had the pleasure of using the Z790 Tai Chi motherboard and uh, here is the thing so I used 64 gigs of DDR5 on 6000 megahertz on Z790 Tai Chi we have Deepcool LT720 cooling 13600K we have of course 
already familiar in my videos RTX 3070 Supreme X and Kingston KC 3000 uh, M.2 SSD. So uh, let's go straight to uh, synthetic benchmarks uh, and uh, thermal testing of course. So AIDA 64 Extreme Edition uh, CPU, FPU, system memory and cache ticked for the Intel Core i5 13600K went up to 70 degrees Celsius while these Ryzen 5 7600X went up to 60 degrees Celsius. Now here comes the interesting part. We have uh, Cinebench R20 and I'm using it just because I have loads and loads of data here. Multi-score with uh, 7600X 6023 while the 13600K 8497. Cinebench R23 7600X 15,410 while the 13600K 22,258. Now this is outstanding when we're talking about performance of course and when we check the difference in Cinebench points uh, it really goes up by uh, margin and it really does uh, take quite a lot of advantage comparing to the Ryzen 5 7600X. Now, when we're taking into consideration the temperature, so the 7600X in uh, R20 went up to 80 degrees Celsius, while the R2381. Now, 13600K in R2086, while the R2388. So, there's the difference in thermals. You get better performance, but you get higher temperatures so far. Now, in Indigo Benchmark, here's something quite interesting. Bedroom for uh, 13600K went to 0 0.690, while Supercar 2.485. While for 7600X, we have 2.027 for Bedroom and Supercar 4.463. That's uh, a bit strange, might be something uh, with, uh, most likely with the software and maybe even the motherboard but nevertheless it really did beat the 13600k now let's go with powin 3.7 now i said with uh, ryzen 5 7600x that i'm using it exclusively for uh, testing the thermals but here's the kicker kernel for 7600x took 0 0.16 seconds while for 13600k 0 0.08 seconds user 1.02 seconds for 13600k while for the 7600x 557.23 seconds i don't know how this managed to happen but it did uh, ellipse time for 13600k 0.84 seconds while for the uh, 7600x 48.96 seconds uh, i also used in 13600k which i didn't use so far uni engine heaven 4.0 with fps 379.1 and the score 9549 v-ray bench 502 we have v samples 15360 for the 13600k while for the 7600x uh, 11651 and the thermals were actually quite the same 78 degrees celsius on 13600k and 7600x on 79 degrees celsius quite interesting i would say now here we go with something that will give us more insights uh, with performance per cores. So CPU profile with uh, maximum cores, we get 9950 while the 7600X 7360. Then we go to the 16 cores, we got 9244 for the 13600K while the 7600X 7249. And as we go lower, I only see the difference right here at the back with one and two cores. Everything else, 4, 8, 16, and maximum thread count is uh, where 13600K beats 7600X. Times by something outstanding. So, CPU score for the 13600K, we got 70,893, while the CPU score for the 7600X, we got 9801 and CPU test uh, 60.11 FPS for 13600K while for the 7600X 32.93. What's there left to say? I mean all these synthetic benchmarks really show us 
something quite interesting and quite outstanding where 13600K really beats 7600X. Now for the gaming segment, of course, uh, the temperatures were quite uh, normal in terms of not reaching those high 80s uh, and um, as well as it would in synthetic benchmarking. But when we take uh, into consideration the gaming in 1080p and 1440p, comparing it to 7600X with the same graphic card, we got some quite interesting results. Now the most advantages I see in 1080p Ultra with uh, 13600K and RTX 3070 compared to the AMD Ryzen uh, 5 7600X uh, were basically almost in all games from 6 to almost 10 FPS difference in 1080p of course. In 1440p on Ultra Details and Configuration we actually got uh, almost uh, 3 to 5 FPS difference towards 13600K winning the battle in gaming as well. I have to take everything into consideration as well. When the release date of uh, Intel 13th generation processors came out, they were cheaper than AMD Ryzen. And then AMD lowered the of their new generation of Ryzen processors. So they tried to cut down the prices to be more competitive in that uh, segment. But taking into consideration that you're still rocking DDR4 on 13th gen of Intel Core processors. You can still reuse your older motherboard from 12th generation. And the only thing that looks here promising is that if AMD continues to use their platform like they did with AM4, they could take the advantages in the next couple of sockets. But currently, with this price tags, uh, with RAMs going uh, DDR4, you could always go with uh, DDR5, but then again, you'll have to go with uh, Z790 or some Z690 and use it normally as you should. But all in all, currently, Intel Core i5-13600K is, without a doubt, a price per performance king with uh, nice price range with all cores, with uh, synthetic benchmarking, with gaming benchmarks, and uh, definitely with the price range, comparing it to the whole system that you need to assemble and buy. So without a doubt, we have a new king in the mid-range category, and I would say it even goes higher because it competes with uh, higher tier processors, without a doubt, which you saw in the charts, and I don't have to explain anything else to that. The only thing that actually would say a bit worries me, but nothing spectacular, just because all the new gen processors are really reaching high temperatures, is the temperature actually. So from 80 to 88 uh, in synthetic benchmarking, and then we go down to gaming where it's 60, 65, maybe even touches 70, depending on the CPU hungry games. It's really quite, uh, quite outstanding, I would say, regardless of the temperature. And it's still, the power consumption is quite, I would say, normal for that uh, range, not comparing it to the 13900K, which I saw that went up to 290 watts. So yeah, that's a bit too much, but we're talking 13600K currently, and without a doubt, for this price tier, for this performance, I would give it a PC Crazy Best Buy badge, without a doubt. Guys, I'll put the links in the description for uh, Intel Core i5-13600K and the configuration that will cost you less, basically, price per performance and will give you quite nice achievements. Of course, there will be some downgrades in the performance uh, comparing to my stats if you go with B660 and DDR4, but I wouldn't consider that too much because I did run everything on stock except for the RAMs running at 6000 megahertz. So yeah, there's that. Finally, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to keep the channel growing and rolling, camera rolling in that terms. And don't forget to click the notification bell for future content because we have to cover the Z790 boards. Plus, there's a slight custom build incoming as well with the 13600K as well. So thanks for watching today's one. Hope you have a good one and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.